Hello, and welcome to Trading 5 Talents. This is week four of using the weeklyoptionslist.com um, algorithm-based uh, options screener. So what you're seeing here is last week's list. You can see the expirations of 311, and this is how I set up the filter. $5,000 I'm willing to invest, and I don't have any earnings plays, and then I want 10% out of the money with a 2% ROI, and then a minimum of $15 in premium. And you can see this reduces the list quite a bit, RSX being the top, but that's Russian-based, so I'm not going to do that. You can see BRCC has multiple strikes. Um, I'm just going to choose the first one, it's 1650. SOXL, LABU, those are all volatility or leveraged plays, so I'm not going to choose that. I'll do APPH not TQQQ, I'll do space, again, not the leverage stuff, not the volatility stuff, I'll choose NNOX, I'll choose AFRM, Riot, Fubo, um, you can see AFRM is here twice, but I'm just choosing the first one, and then I'll choose Mara, and then Sava. So that's what will be in my list for um, this video. Okay, so here are the tickers um, in my spreadsheet. There were nine of them that were recommended by the algorithm. And I've listed them in order in terms of their rank um, uh, on the website. Up here are the filter settings that I just showed you on the website. And these are the recommended strike prices. On Monday morning, I also um, entered in their chance of profit and also their um, stock prices that were listed on the website versus what they actually opened at, the listed premium of these put options versus the actual premium Monday morning. Remember the list prices, the list premium, these are Friday close prices. The actual price of the stock, the actual premium are Monday open prices. All right, so here is what they would have opened at or what you could have sold them at come Monday morning, March 7th. Here are the closing prices of the premium of the put options for each day, Monday through Friday. And if it's red, then that means the premium price is actually increased. So it's greater than what the previous premium was. So Monday, this one opened at 125. However, it closed at 145. So you're losing money because you're selling this put option. That's why it's red. If it decreased, then it would have turned green. So Monday, everything was red. Tuesday, just about everything turned around except for BRCC. And then Wednesday, Thursday, you can see everything is green because all the premiums are now decreasing. So in yellow, this is the um, position that I actually entered based on the recommendation of the weeklyoptionslist.com, and um, I entered at the 1650 strike price. The one in blue is a position that was recommended by the weekly options list. So I already had a put position on Mara, and I think that was actually at the 23 strike price. So if that one was going to win, obviously this one would have won also. Okay, so let's see how everything ended. Um, just about everything expired worthless. So out of nine trades, uh, two of them would have been assigned, and then the other seven were classifying as winners, meaning that they expired worthless, no assignment, and you get to keep all of your cash that was being used as collateral. So the ones that um, were not winners, this one right here, which was AFRM, the closing price of the stock was 30.35 and the strike price was $31. So you actually purchased the stock about 65 cents above the current market price. All right, BRCC, um, this is the one that I was actually in. I was assigned. So it closed at 16.45 and that was the price that I was assigned at, as you can see. It actually moved up after hours and it closed at 16.68. So I'm actually um, in a very good position with this one because I can just sell my stock outright um, come Monday morning or I could sell a covered call on it um, at 16.50 or maybe even the 17 depending on what I uh, want to do. Now, in my case, what I would probably be doing is I would actually just, if the stock stayed at um, you know, 1650 or higher, I would probably just sell the stock rather than selling a covered call against it. One reason uh, is because as you can see here, um, right here, earnings is expected pre-market on 316. So that's this coming week. I don't like earnings plays. Um, I don't know if the stock is going to go up, if it's going to go down. Um, so I just would rather not trade during those weeks. So that's one reason I'd get out. The second reason is I 
right now have $1,650 tied up in this stock. I would rather have that in cash so I can do another cash secured put um, on on a different uh, ticker. So that's those are the two reasons why I probably am just going to exit Monday morning if the price um, is above $1,650. Right. Overall, um, there are w more winning trades than there are losing trades with this service. Um, there are a few of them here that I would not have even entered. Um, they pass through the screener just fine, but like this 94% chance of profit, this 96% chance of profit, um, I would not have entered those trades because the opening premiums were only $1 or one cent per share. So that is just a no-go for me. Um, I would have entered the majority of these other ones had I had the money. Salvo was a really nice play, except I didn't have this cash uh, to put up that Monday morning, so I couldn't enter that trade. This is the one that fit my budget, so the BRCC is the one that I entered Monday morning, and I'm very happy with it. It's been recommended quite a bit. So if you looked at um, two weeks ago, BRCC, I was in it for $16. All right, so the last two weeks it was recommended and I've been profitable on both of them. What happens yeah. when you're assigned a cash secured put? Well, again, that's just the first half of the wheel. Now that you own the shares, you can start selling covered calls. And um, once that gets assigned, your shares are called away, you keep the premium and you complete the wheel strategy uh, with that ticker. The next thing I wanted to show you is um, based on a request that uh, I got on Twitter, and that was regarding uh, the spreadsheet that I'm showing right here. Do I have it available? Is it, can, can I share it? Um, and yeah, I can share it. I, I didn't think anybody would want it because I was just doing a back test of this service. But yeah, I can share it. Um, and then also embedded in that request was what were the um, stocks closing prices each day. So not just the premium closing prices, as you see, you know, in these columns right here, that's just the put premium, but what were the stocks closing prices? So what I did is I um, made a new sheet and that is listed here. And it's a little bit more complicated because now I'm tracking two things, both the stock and the option. So the order is the same. The one in yellow is the one that I've traded. The one in Mara, I'm sorry, the one in blue is something that I've traded similarly. And then here are my filters down here. All right, so it works the same, except here in row four is where we have all of the stock information. And then in row five, we have the put option information the recommended strike price, the chance of profit, um, last week's close, this week's open. So let's let's look at, um, let me hide these just so it makes it a little bit easier to see. So 1650 strike price for the put on BRCC was recommended. It closed last week, the stock did at 1860. So that gives us a 68% chance of profit. And then um, the put premium was $1.40 last Friday. However, you can see there was a slight gap up um, to 1865 on Monday, and then there was a slight gap down in the put premium, $1.25. So these would turn green if there is a uh, profitable move being made. So for a stock, if it goes up, it's green. For a put premium or short premium, it's going down, therefore it's green. All right, Monday for the stock, it went down to 1688, which is why it's red. It went down to 1598, which is why it's red. Wednesday it went up to 1668, green. And so you can see these numbers are changing colors based on the previous day's movement. Uh, similarly, as in the last sheet, the put premium um, has gone up. Therefore, we are now negative because we're short this put. Um, it went up again, and then it started going down, which is why it turns green. All right, Friday, 1645 close for the stock, 58 cents premium. However, um, we're not doing anything with that premium. We still keep the full premium of $1.25, but we're now, because the stock is lower than our strike price, we are assigned the shares. So that's why it was classified no as a winner, the final ROI. I also put in this, um, this column right here in this summary column, and these are just spark lines or spark graphs or spark charts, whatever they're called. And they are just showing in the top what the stock is doing over the week versus what the put option is doing over the week, All right? So if the put starts high, ends low, it's going to be green. If the start, if the stock starts high and ends low, it's going to be red because, you know, that makes sense. It's basically just tracking what is going on throughout the week, but in a more visual way. And as you can see, as the stock goes down, put premiums go up. And that's what you would expect. As a stock goes up, 
put premiums go down. And they're going down more significantly because not only of the stock movement, but also theta decay. So that's what you see here in the summary. You see this convergence and then this divergence here. All right, so let's look at the other ones. Uh, so let's unhide those rows and we'll just go straight to the spark lines. Um, so here is this one that just ended at, you know, started at one cent and then expired worthless because it was such a high chance of probability it just stayed the same and it didn't matter what the stock did. All right, um, let's look at this set right here. The stock goes down, so the premium goes up. The stock stays the same. The premium goes down because of theta decay. As a stock increases, the premium goes down even more. And even if the stock comes down, the premium, it, the theta decay is just so strong that it continues to move that premium down and it eventually expires worthless. This one just stayed at one cent. Um, here's a good example. Again, stock goes down. That means the premium is going up. The stock is increasing throughout the rest of the week. Therefore, the premium just slowly goes down, not only based on stock movement, but also based on theta decay. Similarly here, and then this one right here, you can see even though the stock is moving up and we have the premium moving down, at the end of the week, the stock started moving down. Yet, the premium didn't move up. And the reason is because of theta decay. Look at the stock right here. 754 was its high, and then it went down to 706, and then it went down to 660, almost a dollar. Yet the premium went from $4, it still went down to three, and then eventually expired worthless. So that's the power of um, the wheel strategy is your selling options and you're having theta decay work in your favor. So I'll include this as well in the download. So all you have to do is just enter your tickers, enter your um, strike prices. If you want to enter the chance of profit, you can. This is not used in any calculation. Um, you'll need to enter the closing of last week, the opening of this week, and all the close prices throughout the week. The spark lines get um, updated automatically. The final ROI gets updated automatically, as does the winner column. So if you have any questions, go ahead and leave a comment down below or um, ask me on Twitter at Trading5Talents. If you want to continue to learn more about the wheel strategy and how I use uh, option selling uh, for my lifestyle trading, then go ahead and click on the subscribe button. Don't forget to turn on the notifications so you can catch all the updates. Until next time, trade wisely and take care.